Joining us today is Geert Kirsten. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So we're going to talk a little bit about Salsi. Tell us about the research and development and what it can potentially accomplish. Well, there are three things that a cancer patient would ask you. Will I live longer with this drug? Is it going to be toxic? And how much will it cost? We set out to create a drug that has little to no toxicity, that helps you live longer or cures you. By the way, most cancer drugs don't extend to your chance of living and it is not going to be massively expensive. Okay. And it's taken a long time, but we're finally at the end and I think we're going to be successful. That's what it looks like. So your end goal is to prolong a patient's life? Well, we're all going to die at some point. Of course. The best thing is if we can cure the cancer, it never comes back and we live a normal life. A life. Second best okay. thing is to do all of that with no toxicity. And then if you can do it, at, none of these drugs are ever going to be cheap, but not ridiculously expensive manner, then I think it will be welcome all over the place. But that doesn't exist today. Okay. And we think the key lies in your body and in my body. Our immune system, you're alive. Definitely. You're not toxic. I would hope not. Toxic. I would hope no, not. Definitely not, right? So why should a cancer drug be toxic? Definitely, that makes sense. That makes so, sense. the moment you can show the world that you can create a non-toxic cancer drug, people can think, say, hold on, why can this drug be non-toxic when all the other ones are? And that's how we change the world, because the moment people start questioning. So, but let me take you back to the basic idea. You've fought off a lot, a lot of diseases. Your immune system is the key. Same for all of us. We're destroying the immune system with cancer treatments. Surgery, radiation, chemo, the first treatments, destroy your immune system. So, in some cases you're cured and then you're okay. But if you're not cured, your immune system is now super weakened and the recurrence of cancer will kill you quickly. Wow. The only time we can cure you is with the first treatment and the medical community has a term for it that's called intent to cure meaning that X percent of people will be cured. So we think that if we can take the healthy immune system before it's destroyed by surgery, radiation, chemo, that will have a certain effect and you combine that effect with the effects of surgery, radiation, chemo, you should be much more successful in eliminating everything from a tumor. If everything is eliminated, how can it grow back? That's amazing. And so, I was reading on your phase three study and how you guys kind of administer that before the traditional treatments. Is that why? It's Just never been done. I think the usual drug development is that I take people who failed everything and now I can try my medicine because they're going to die in any case. It's really sad, but that's how it is. But an immune system drug, you've got to use it while the immune system is still intact. Once you've had surgery, your immune system is screwed up, the lymphatics are cut up. Radiation turns the area into a lunar landscape. Chemotherapy, we all know, is a poison. The three of them together, what does your immune system look like? So how could you possibly expect your immune system at that point in time to cure you? Only up front is it possible, but it's never been done before. And you only have three weeks, which is why we're the only one, because Usually cancer drugs take months to work, right? Right. But you, you're not allowed to delay that first surgery. Okay, okay. And so the company has been around for quite some time. How has it progressed and where do you see it going in the near future? Well, it's very simple. We are now at the end of a massive phase three clinical trial to bring our drug to market. If we can successfully show survival benefit, we should become the new standard of care for one of the biggest cancers in the world. And by the way, in that cancer, head and neck cancer, it's from under your nose down to your clavicle, 6% of all cancers. The last advance in, or last approval by FDA in advanced, in stages three and four, the worst ones, not yet treated head and neck cancer, was 60 years ago. 60. We still cut tongues out. We cut your, half of your face off. You lose your teeth from radiation. 
you it, it's miserable wow. the world wants change the world wants something better and i hope that in the very very near future we can provide that it's amazing and lastly why should investors take a look at Salsai? i'm not going to tell people what to do i'm going to point to what i'm doing I've continued to buy over the last few years, more and more and more and more stock, as recently as January. So I feel that if you can create a cancer drug that really helps a lot of people, and on top of that, create a cancer drug that has little to no toxicity, it's going to be worth a lot of money. But that's the only thought of money I have in all of that. If it works, it's going to be a huge money maker, but I don't have to think about it because I can focus on doing the right thing. It looks like it's going to work because we have to wait for a certain number of people to die and they should have died years ago. Why aren't they dying, right? It's a miserable disease. In right. fact, the American Cancer Society said in their last few reports that the cancer that we're focusing on, which is mainly in the oral cavity, the death rate is increasing. Not decreasing, it's increasing. So why don't we have the required number of deaths to end our study? Right. There's something that's going on. We're blinded, right? So, but there's something that's going on. I believe it's going to be successful. Um, and but you know, it's all about the final data. Of course, I know, and we all hope it is successful. I wish you the best with the company, and thank you so much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. Of course. I'm Rebecca and this has been Behind the Buzz.